Hello YouTube, it's Sign here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we are doing another manga review. Today we are going to be reviewing Seven Deadly Sins, volumes one through seven. There you go, that's uh, all of them right there. Now, one through seven is kind of an awkward amount of volumes. Um, it's just all the ones I had, and I actually wanted to read these because I am planning on selling them, probably. Um, just because... I really liked it, but like, I'd rather collect Hiromashima works than Seven Deadly Sins. So I don't know, but here we go. I wanted to review them before I decided what to do with them. So here we are, volumes one through seven of Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, yeah, this is written by Nakaba Suzuki and it's published by Kadansha. So you guys can see right there and of course all of these spines have their edges taken off of them because they have Kadansha disease for whatever reason Kadansha's volumes always end up with something like that you know this little kind of tag of uh, the edge of the spine just kind of tearing off which kind of sucks now the demographic of these and I'm just gonna hold a volume one now is Shonen. They run in the same Shonen magazine as Fairy Tale and Eden Zero. And I actually can't remember what it's called. It's not Shonen Sunday. I think it's Weekly Shonen Magazine, just like that. Or weekly Shonen something. I'm not really sure. I can't remember, but it's the same one as Fire Force, Eden Zero, Fairy Tale, whatever that one is. It's like the second biggest one. And the genres here are adventure and fantasy. This kind of has a kind of Vaguely uh, Arthurian legend kind of feel to it. It kind of feels like it was inspired by a lot of like British type of uh, history and kind of mythology, which is actually pretty cool. So I really like that. And it has an adaptation. It actually has a Netflix uh, anime, which is uh, like a proper anime. And actually the first season was really good, but it got worse. And the first season is actually one of the reasons why I got back into uh, manga and anime and stuff so I really do appreciate this story um, and the anime for it at least the first season but I don't know it's whatever I, I'm sure there's reasons for why the anime got worse it might not be good reasons but they're reasons nonetheless so there you go now the premise here is that this chiv chivalric or sh chiv chivalric order of chivalry this sh sh chivalric order um called the seven deadly sins has been forced to disband they um actually were blamed for an attempted coup um uh on the kingdom of leonis or something like that i can't remember what this place is called i think it's britannia uh, but the king was called king leonis um and now this princess her name is elizabeth um, is trying to get the band back together because she needs their help. And uh, we basically follow her and uh, then the guy that takes over the role of main character, Meliodas, as they attempt to reunite the Seven Deadly Sins in hopes of saving the kingdom from like an incoming, possibly internal coup d'etat. Now that's Elizabeth right there and that's Meliodas. And yeah, that's uh, that's basically it for that. Now the plot line here is actually pretty um, slow going early on, uh, but it is good. It kind of reminds me of Eden Zero, you know, and that whole kind of way of like, okay, we have this initial setup. We need to gather these people in order to do this thing, right? And along the way, we have to actually end up fighting a lot of things and a lot of different people in order to get to the place we have to go. Um, or in order to achieve the goal that we have to do, which is very similar to the first 11 volumes of uh, Eden Zero, where it's just like, okay, we have to gather the crew. Okay, now we have the crew. Now we have to gather the shining stars and we have to go do this thing, right? Here, it's kind of similar. We have to um, find the seven deadly sins or find one of the deadly seven, seven deadly sins. And then with them, find all the other ones. And in order to find all the other ones, they have to find information about them and ask people around in different places and then every time they gather a new seven deadly sins member um they're closer and closer to their goal but then there's a secondary subplot there that they have to also gather 
the sacred treasures of each uh, of the members in order to allow them to be as powerful as they can be. So it's pretty good. I actually do really enjoy it. It's very fun. Um, we get provided a lot of background of each character along the way. We get to see a lot of different powers and a lot of different things happening with each character. I actually really enjoy it because we get to see the dynamic between the characters as part of the plot line developing, right? We get to see um, how our main character Meliodas, which really isn't the main character, um, kind of interact with all of the other seven of the sins that we meet along the way and kind of see that he's a pretty good guy even if he has some really odd kind of uh, perversions to him. And it's really good. Like overall, the plot line is really good. We also do get a lot of power crawl. So every time they face off a new opponent, the opponent is stronger than the one they faced before. And we kind of continue this thing until, um, you know, <laughs> it ends up being very powerful. Of course, the seven deadly sins were the strongest members of the kingdom and <laughs> maintain their abilities um, um, quite well over the years that they've been disbanded. So it's not that hard to beat the bad guys, but the bad guys are definitely getting to the level where it's going to start getting difficult really soon uh, in the coming volumes. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's it for the plot line there. Now the characters here. Well, of course, there's the seven deadly sins. So there's seven characters we have to collect at the end of volume seven. I think we have four of the characters collected and the introduction of the fifth one has uh, kind of happened, right? Uh, we have Meliodas, Ban, King, and Diane. Now, um, I didn't label them in order of uh, <laughs> when they showed up, but rather in order of importance because honestly, King and Diane are very secondary characters to Bon and Meliodas. And in fact, King and, Mel and Bon are actually quite connected in terms of their stories, but Bon is really the important character out of the two, in my opinion. Um, and Meliodas is definitely the most important character. This is actually very similar to Fairy Tale, and where the main character is actually the female character, in this case, Elizabeth, but in Fairy Tale it's uh, Lucy, or at least they're the narrator of the story. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that Lucy is necessarily the main character either, but she's definitely the one where the story is coming from. In the same way here for Elizabeth, and then they get usurped from their main character Ness by the male character that helps them along the way. In this case, Meliodas and Fairy Tale, it's Natsu. And then the uh, what's it called crew of very weird people happens to develop around them, right? And that's the Seven Deadly Sins. And we even have a comedic. Uh, pet character here we have Hawk who is a pig uh, which is kind of funny why would you name a pig Hawk but I mean you know whatever and he can talk and he's kind of like happy um, the little blue cat from fairy tale right and he's obviously the comedic relief mascot but he also ends up being quite a honorable member of the team he's useful he helps Elizabeth out as often as he can and uh, he <laughs> is kind of a funny a little bit more strict character to kind of deal with all of the very wacky and kind of ridiculous things that go around them due to the seven deadly sins so yeah characters wise this story is also very very good i, I think it's very nice world building wise it's super solid like it's well done there's a lot of it you can clearly see that this is a world that has a lot of stuff to it but it's not actually very clear how things work um, on one side, we have these fairy creatures. Um, one of them took care of the Fountain of Youth. And then there's um, this other character, a king, that relates to that sort of thing. And then there's this other character that relates to that. But I don't really know what they are. I think they are supposed to be kind of like British fae characters. And then we have uh, human people. And then we have this introduction of demons uh, near the end of the... Uh, kind of seventh volume and I'm, I'm that's kind of spoilery but not really because I mean that's kind of just like part of who the characters are like I'm not really saying anything that you would have probably not known if you knew anything about uh, seven deadly sins right and then uh, we get introduced to the different magics that every character has and it's kind of uh, one character one attribute kind of magic right so um, Meliodas has this thing called Full Counter, which allows him to retaliate any attack twice as powerfully as any he receives, as long as it's magical. 
there's uh, characters that are more traditionally magically attributed, like uh, Gil Thunder has magic uh, lightning, and um, his, his buddy, um, I can't remember his name, but his buddy has wind magic, and Bond has a steel mechanic, and um, you know Diane has a kind of ground or earth kind of power, um, and she's also a giant. So we have a lot of different races, and they all kind of are traditionally Celtic kind of races, I guess, uh, or maybe they're not, but they're definitely British, uh, like in nature, right? Like the this comes from British style mythology. Giants show up. Uh, fae show up, demons and, and humans, right? Um, and yeah, I, there's a lot of stuff here, but nothing is truly explained. Nothing is very clear. We don't actually know too much about stuff. Diane is the only giant we have seen so far. Um, King is the only fairy we've seen so far. Meliodas is the only demonic character we've seen so far. Bond is the only immortal character we've seen so far. You know, there's a lot of stuff here and everyone is kind of super unique in a certain way, but it doesn't really make sense because it's like, if there's others like you, we would have seen them. We should see them, right? But we don't really. So I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Overall, I think it really isn't too complex. It's pretty generally fantastical, but it's not very complex, but it is good. I do like it. I think it's very fun. Uh, Art-wise, I think it's very good. In fact, um, it's kind of interesting because when I first read the first volume a long time ago, after I had watched the anime, I think I even did a, a review for the first volume here on the channel. Although I can't remember if I actually did. I definitely read it and mentioned it on the channel. I just can't remember actually doing the review or not. Um, I actually found it to be kind of awkward. Um, it kind of has that same kind of vibe as fairy tale in one piece where it's like stretchy and it kind of feels like it's very toriyama inspired even though it doesn't look like a toriyama kind of work um but it actually is different enough and it actually ends up being quite pretty looking very fast so it's kind of interesting you don't actually have to deal with that kind of like getting used to the art aspect that kind of happens in something like one piece or fairy tale this is actually a lot easier to kind of get into a lot quicker although this might actually be because i have more experience with a lot of different art styles and this one doesn't feel as weird as some of the other ones that i've read recently so maybe that's why i'm not too sure but it's basically not very difficult to kind of enjoy this art style it is a little bit wonky early on it does have odd proportions sometimes the torsos of characters are really long but it gets easier and easier every chapter you read and it of course actually gets really good at certain points so it's not that bad Fan service wise though, this story actually has quite a lot and it's actually generally not horrible. I mean, I don't really find it to be bad. The only problem is that the there's this kind of issue of like consent be, between Meliodas um, and uh, Elizabeth, which is who the fan service aspects kind of happen with. Um, you know, I mean, it's a joke. It's not supposed to be a serious issue, right? And in fact, most of the time, Elizabeth doesn't ever say anything against it. And she doesn't play it like as a secondary character would be would do. So, I mean, it's not like she's mad about it happening. But it also just doesn't feel like it should happen very often. But because it's a joke, it's like, well, it, it's just that the joke didn't land. It's not that it's bad. And so it's a kind of complex kind of situation. But I think generally it just isn't very comfortable and I actually don't really like it too much. Um, it actually makes me a little bit uncomfortable to read it. But given that my stance on fan service is like, yeah, it can be annoying, but like you shouldn't really <laughs> care too much about it. I don't really have too many issues with it um, beyond the kind of initial like, mm, this could be kind of concerning, you know, kind of feel to it. But I mean, it's whatever, it ends up being pretty attractive certain, at certain times. And generally it's not when it's that weird kind of like pervy joke. Um, so there you go. Um, yeah, but yeah, if you don't like fan service, don't read this. It's not, it's not gonna be enjoyable for you. And if you don't like things that are kind of dubious 
Uh, don't read this either. It's not going to be for you either. Um, or well, maybe like isn't the right word. If you can't tolerate things that are maybe a little bit dubious, uh, don't read this. Uh, but yeah, rating wise, I think it's a four out of five. Um, basically, the only issue here is that kind of dubiousness of the fan service. Everything else is actually quite, uh, quite good. I actually do really like most of the stuff that happens in this volume or in this series, sorry. Um, and I actually do want to collect more of it, but I do think that I want to sell this right now because I don't feel like I'm, like I'm going to collect it anytime soon or at least uh, not within the next six months. Um, so I do want to get rid of it, make a little bit of money off of it and put that towards things that I do want to uh, collect right now. So. That's kind of my idea with it. I'm not too sure. I mean, I'm not getting rid of it because I don't like it. I'm getting rid of it because I'm not looking to collect it right now. And I think that's a fair thing. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy this. It just means that I'm looking to collect other things right now because I'm interested in other things more. Um, but yeah, generally, I think this is a good title. This is a good, kind of enjoyable fantasy story. Um, it does have its issues here and there, right? So there you go now i definitely recommend this title if you have watched the anime and liked it but didn't like the drop in animation quality there's only 41 volumes so it's not a very long series and it actually already has a sequel currently um serializing so there's quite a lot of content that you can enjoy from this series if you want and if you want something that's relatively long but not so long that it gets into the 60 to 70 volume range this is a good one to kind of collect right and things that are similar to this would be fairy tale and black clover now fairy tale has the same kind of style of magical elements very european inspired whereas black clover has this kind of idea of like a ragtag group of knights kind of saving the world right so um this is kind of very similar to both of them in slightly different ways generally all three of them have this very european style uh fantasy setting and all three of them deal with ragtag you know uh groups of people saving the world but i mean uh the the more similar one would be black clover so there you go i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like subscribe and comment down below let me know what you thought and thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it see you guys later